Well, hi again, folks. We're back with another project for you. And this is for those who like to build their own equipment. This is a project I've been working on for approximately a year. And uh, it consists of uh, a new miller table and several different types of sluices. For lack of a better name for it, I've started calling it the Deep Well series. And that is because it has a deep well for the water bar to sit into. And this allows the water to uh, build up from below and then overflow the top. And in doing so, the weight of the water as it gets towards the top holds the turbulence down. And so there is very, very little turbulence in this. And it makes for a much smoother water flow going down the sluice or the table. Well, the idea behind this is pretty simple. You just glue different pieces of board together to form the either the miller table or the sluice. As you can see here, we've glued uh, two pieces on top of each other. For a sluice with a vortex mat here, we have glued three pieces together, uh, a baseboard, an intermediate board, and then the top board for the mat. Now the job is made easier due to the fact that you can go to your local Home Depot store and buy dimensional lumber in three quarter, half inch, and quarter inch that are all exactly the same width. So basically all you have to do is cut it to length and glue them together. If you notice on this, the flow is very smooth. And this is what I wanted for trying to collect the very, very fine gold. And uh, to do that, you need just a really smooth water flow, both in your sluice and on the miller table. And I think we're pretty well accomplishing that fact here with this one. Well, with no turbulence, you can very easily see what's going on on the table. And uh, it makes it very easy to spot the very tiny gold. Well, one of the things that my grandson and I are really liking about these tables and uh, sluices is the fact that you can take and just sweep the gold off into the well and store it there until you're through running. This makes it real handy. And uh, when you get to the end of your run, you can just kind of sweep it all over into the corner. And then you can just take your snuffer bottle and uh, suck it up. Also, you can just take and sweep your gold right off into the gold vial. And that makes it handy to, to bottle it up. For those who may not want to go to the trouble of building the gold vial in, you can always just use your snuffer bottle to snuff it right off from the surface. Or you can sweep it into the well and then snuff it up from there. So you have a number of different uh, things you can do for cleaning up your gold.
Well, when you're snuffering up gold, invariably you're going to get some black sand or other material mixed in with it. And sooner or later you're going to want to clean it up. And these tables are really ideal for that. The one thing you want to do, though, is to be sure you set the water flow to where it will just barely start moving off the black sands, but the finer gold stays in place. You don't want to be washing that finer gold off if you can. And also, if you do have one or two flakes get away from you, the material will bunch up at the bottom of the table and so you can brush it back up and rework that material again. Well you just keep uh, working the gold around with your brush and separating it from the black sand. And it takes a little time and a little effort here, but uh, it'll clean up fairly quickly. It certainly helps if your gold is all screened to the exact same size and you can fit your water level to that particular size and leave it but if you've got a mixture like this of uh, coarse gold and fine gold eh, it's kind of like herding cats you know some of them are going to get away from you and you got to go chase them so just take a little patience and uh, keep at it you can always go down to the bottom of the table and brush that material back up and rework it some more to get the ones that got away from Well, it. most people who build these will already have a setup for them, but this is what I'm running mine out of currently. It's a 10-gallon roughneck tote that I bought at Homey Depot for oh, about 7 8 bucks, something like that. And it will also fit a shoebox down inside to catch all the tailings. Now you can make these tables as wide or as long as you want and uh, this tote will handle up to about a, no, about a 10 inch wide sluice or miller table. My favorite pump for these is this little 264 gallon fountain pump. You can buy at Harbor Freight for about $16 with a coupon. Uh, it's way overpowered for what you need, so you'll need to put a valve in line to control the output on it. But this has a really good sediment filter on it, which is better than any of the others, and so I like it for that. Plus the fact that it will handle 3 8 half inch, and 3 quarter inch hoses on it. So this makes a very versatile little pump. I like to use this 3 quarter inch bilge pump hose because it's very flexible and uh, this gives you the most output from this pump you can get. Also put a valve right in the middle of it uh, to control the water flow. Don't put the valve at the uh, head of the uh, miller table or your sluice because that water is pressurized when it comes out of the valve and going into your spray head and it will screw your water pattern up very badly. Putting the valve in the middle like we have here allows the water turbulence to settle down before it goes up and hits the miller table. So by the time it comes out it's nice and smooth. I used to buy these little Gilmore three quarter inch full flow valves uh, off from eBay but uh, and they work well except every one of them leaks right out of the box first time but uh, you can also use uh, the regular 5 8 garden hose that you can buy at Home Depot and stuff but it restricts the water flow down to half inch so it cuts it about in half 
My favorite valve so far is a gas valve that you can buy at Home Depot. And you can buy hose fittings uh, there as well for this. This is a really smooth uh, valve and it's full flow at three quarters of an inch. So it's a little bit more money, but uh, I think it's well worth uh, the extra cost for it. Also, a little addition that my grandson asked for on his, and I've found has been very handy on my sluices and miller tables, is this little uh, level that you can buy off from eBay. You can buy uh, oh, about four of them for $6. And uh, you can put them on each one of your sluices or miller tables, and they're very handy to level things out. Well, one thing I'd like to mention in passing, also, is brushes. The one on the left has been my favorite. It's a nylon bristle basting brush, and it has very, very fine bristles on it, and the gold doesn't stick to it very much. So it's an ideal uh, brush for that. The one on the right is a new brush that's just coming onto the market, and it's a paint brush, and this one I bought at... Uh, Homey D, and uh, it has the very fine bristles as well to it. And these brushes are getting to be uh, more common, and you can find some of these in the paint section. Well, let's fire this puppy up and let you see what it can do. This is the sixth generation of these that I've built over the past year, and I think it's just about uh, where I want it. This nice smooth flow lets you see what's going on on the table and it also lets you see the very very finest gold and allows you to recover it very easily. Well a lot of times my grandson will test uh, a sampling of gutter material by running it across the miller table first to see if there's any gold in it that shows up. And he doesn't bother to clean it up too much or classify it much. But uh, he'll find out real quick here whether or not there's gold in there and it's worth uh, spending more time on it or not. So this is kind of a good sampling tool, which uh, I guess is similar to uh, panning the sample in the first place. Well, if we happen to determine that there is gold in uh, the sample, then we'll go to more steps and screen the material down all the way down to uh, minus 100 and run it across the table. Then we'll extract all uh, the big gold and the fine gold as well out of it. So, as you can see here, this is uh, a run of some of the finer material. This has been screened down to 50 mesh, so uh, the bigger stuff is 50, about 50 mesh, and uh, the smaller stuff is down into the 100s or maybe minus 100s. So anyway, you can kind of get an idea of how well this does with uh, the fine gold as well as the large gold. And uh, so far I've been real happy with it because it uh, picks up pretty much everything I see and lets me collect it. Well, I've heard that the Alaska Gnome Black Sand Beach Gold is probably some of the smallest uh, 
out there and some of the toughest to try to recover. So I uh, got me in a pound of it to give it a try. So I'm going to run a little bit of it here and let you see how it does on it. But rather than have you sit through the whole thing, we'll just kind of uh, hit the highlights of it as we go along here and you can uh, kind of see how it does. Ah, kind of nice to see it's not all tiny stuff. I think I see a little uh, bigger pieces there kind of showing through. Well, this is good. As you can see, it is a little time consuming and whatnot, but with the smooth water flow, you can see what you're doing very easily. And if you have your table angle and the water flow adjusted properly, it's no problem to uh, separate that very, very tiny gold from uh, the rest of the black sand. So I think this will do a pretty nice job for you. And so now we'll just sweep it into the pile, and we've got it. Well, there you go, folks. I hope this little introduction is uh, giving you kind of an idea of what these tables can do. After running these for about a year, it's kind of hard to go back to the old design, and uh, I'm not so sure I ever will. But anyway, for those who uh, are interested, I have also videos coming up on the sluices, working with the same design, and also how to build them. So stay tuned. I'll have... Uh, videos on those and how to build both the miller table and the sluices coming up so as always thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day bye now <laughs>